Andrew. Um, also, he always talks about he's a math guy. He's an economist. Does the math, yeah. He does the math. And so it, um, he's a numbers guy is what he says. And so if it doesn't make sense numerically, then he doesn't do it. So, Donna, you say they have an office like that at UC San Diego. Talking yeah, about the, yeah, uh, dreamer the, office. the dreamer's office. It just doesn't, I mean, wh where's the black office? Where's the Afro-American office? It's the minorities affairs. Right. EOPS. That's what, uh, what's that? What's Equal that opportunity yeah, or something program, like that. Yeah, program system or something like there that. There you go. That's where it's at. But see, but the, here's the funny thing. They can go to the Dreamers thing and still go to EOPS. But why is that, though? Because it's, especially it's, somewhere in California, it is majority Hispanic. After a while, they're going to have a lot of voting power. Black people, we got y'all already. We don't need No, y'all not even moving, so we're not yeah, worried about yeah, We don't need to you know, cater to you guys. Y'all ain't going nowhere. Just like the article I put up to, uh, today where it talked about um, advertisers are not spending uh, with black people right. uh, to try to get black people anymore. Um, out of $84 billion, it said that $18 billion was spent on um, advertising to black people, and then it's dropped like 5%. Yeah. And so they're trying to, you know, of course, there's black pundits are saying, oh, well, you know, they need to cater more to black people. And as I also pointed out, why are you going to um, spend money where you're getting stuff for free? Black Twitter gave Popeye's $25 million you know, free of free advertising. advertising. So the point is they know they already have us. Let's stay, save this money. And let's go toward a demographic like the Hispanics, where we need to get them Those on numbers. board, because mm -hmm. we got black people on board already, mm -hmm. right? And uh, Al says, this week's show is much better than last week. I think D talks fast because Donovan's commentary <laughs> is long. <laughs> Keep our work uh, the, in the com uh, communication. Uh, he said we argued a lot last week. you damn yeah. right, because I was right and you were wrong. <laughs> and uh, Charles says, if you are not against, if you are not against us then you are for us unless your position is neutral then you are against us well I, so i don't know exactly what you mean are you saying that like hispanics aren't against us um i don't think it's against what you know i don't think it's 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 a transitional type thing an adversarial thing that ain't what it is you want to know my short answer hey, what's your short answer i think overall hispanics are against us well, I don't think it's adversarial. I think it's. Uh, oh, I think a lot of it is adversarial. No, because adversarial is more like like it's more like you're trying to prey on a person, or you just you just hate them just to hate them. They're they're just saying, hey, we're gonna we're taking over. I mean, over. you do not see the video of the Hispanic lady who was supposed to be a civil rights investigator in that bar the other day, telling like, because she was drunk and the black bartender told her, uh, you know, hey, give me your keys. You can't drive. You had too right. much to drink. And she told him. You know, black people are this and that, right. or, or, or low down, and I, I'm gonna call the KKK and all this other stuff. So to say that you know Hispanics aren't necessarily against us, I kind of beg to differ. I mean, I, I just don't see them as being allies to black people. You, you guys tell me what you think. Uh, and Benny says they couldn't argue with none of his points because they weren't. The normal political talking point. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. Like, how many people have ever heard of something like democracy dollars? I've never heard of that until I start to research Andrew Yang's platform. Democracy dollars in that, you get every, and I said this earlier, every American who can vote $100 to um, donate to the candidate of their choice instead of uh, big money, lobbyists and different people like that, giving boatloads of money to candidates and buying these candidates, we would be able to, if you will, buy the candidates we want that would be bought by the people who are being affected by the laws and things that they would enact. So to me, that's real gangster. Giving everybody a democracy dollar here. I like this candidate. Let me give a couple dollars of this one. Yeah, I like this one too. I'm going to give $50 of that one and see where it goes, you know? Um, hey, our son, what's happening? Uh, and Jonelle says, um, it's only intelligent to speak the language of the people you're dealing with or get an interpreter, right? But you know, especially in California, you are dealing with um, a lot of Hispanics, and so I guess I can understand, especially from a business standpoint, we need people who can speak to Hispanic people because they're spending money as well. I get that, but I don't think we should be labeled as lazy because we don't want to speak the language. We're already speaking the language that's native to us, right? And Benny says that's why we took our language. That's why they took our language away from us, right? Um, well, for one, they didn't understand and they didn't want us to be able to communicate. We were forced to learn English and to forget the language that we had. And so, I mean, I don't think we should be forced to speak Spanish. 
do y'all? <laughs> um, and Charles says, shaking my head to hear D is sounding awfully Americanized with that rant. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I see where you're coming from. I was about to say, oh, man. You finally been exposed. Thank you. Somebody's actually, <laughs> we're getting it. We're getting it. Donna says, I wouldn't say lazy, but other countries foster being multilinguistic. The la reason um, why they don't go out their way for American traveling is for that same reason. Um, as, uh, as far as uh, multilinguistic, I mean, well, I, if you think about it here, I mean, we are multilinguistic we are, here. Are. America is considered the melting pot, yeah. if you will. English is a uh, the one language that is universal around the world. Right. Everybody does speak English. English is the second language that is taught. Right, so. but you know, as far as us being lazy because we don't want to learn it, I mean, well, you don't need to learn, especially what? How many of us actually leave this country? <laughs> but you got to be like that. Most Americans don't travel, so you got to, you know, I mean, you don't need to. If you're not Jamaica, leaving, that's yeah, no. no, no. Charlie says Democrats gave medical insurance to Hispanic Latin people that don't even have papers to live in America, yep. while America don't have ma Americans don't have um, medical insurance, and so there you go. That's right. that whole little dreamers pathway to citizenship and type I, of thing. And I'm going to tell you here in California, you've got an emergency. Uh, five, about three miles down the road here, there's a, a regional hospital, county regional hospital. 24 hours a day, 365. That emergency room is packed. I would rather. Go to the Veterans Hospital. I'm about to say, you'd rather cut your own yes. leg off than go. <laughs> go to the Veterans Hospital. I will be seen 16, it's 16 miles away, but I will be seen so much faster over there than if I went over there because our hospitals are being... It's clogged. Yeah, with yeah. people who do not have insurance and people that are not All right. legal. And Allison, speaking of blacks working, D and I had an in-depth conversation about blacks working. Example, all the black people working at the NRG Stadium, that's in Texas, the Texas Stadium, uh, by the way, I finally said the end where he is so stupid. <laughs> ah, so basically, he was saying that when, after the games are over, it's about 90% 90, 90 of the people who are cleaning up the stadiums and picking up trash and peanut shells and all mm -hmm. that are black people. Yes. And then and they're happy to do it. Well, you know, he says he often tells them, hey, come over to my job. Right. Give, them, give them my name and stuff. Come over. You don't have to do this. And he says a lot of them are like, well, you know. But I said, but if we're thinking in terms of group economics, if we were to have our own businesses, we can hire more of our people. And it wouldn't be 90% of people at the stadium, as he said, from like 3 in the afternoon to 11 at night, cleaning up the stadium. Well, glad. Uh, you for know, $7 an hour right. for what he's telling um, me. Al, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because here's what's happening with these sports venues and stuff like that. They, they come into the community and they tell these people, Oh, we're going to bring jobs and stuff like that. What kind of jobs? What they're bringing in is these little temporary seasonal type work. Uh, we've got stadiums in L.A. right now, and they gentrified everybody out of there. But, you know, if it's a seasonal type work at $9 an hour, it, I mean, and with no benefits. But think about it this way. We're in L.A. Who do you think is going to get most of those, those jobs and, will, and would love to work those jobs? Hispanics. Right. Yeah, and uh, to your point, and thank you, Arson, for that comment. He says, your look for the last, past few weeks, you have hearts on the smiling faces. Thank oh, thank you. So you. I, I, I put a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, you know, as far yeah. as the, um, <laughs> the football stadiums, as he was saying in Los Angeles, um, they I was listening to a report on NPR. Sad. I listened to a lot of NPR, by I the way. Too. You know, they're saying that those rents for people triple. Yes. And I'm not talking like, okay, well, this and one is going to And the stadium is not even done yet. Yes said tripled the rent for those people tripled where people are be are now being forced to either move in with other people and then i i, I read a story of a guy who lived you know i guess the inglewood area is it is inglewatts yeah. Ingle if mm -hmm. you will he lived there for years and his rent doubled maybe tripled and he had to move in with a sister and then her and then her rent tripled and now they're like both looking for a spot to live wait and check this out Guess whose district that is? Aunt Maxine, a black woman. Has Aunt Maxine stood up to these corporations and these stadiums and people? And here's the thing. The stadium is being built with tax dollars. What? You know, and then... Uh, how does that benefit the... Wait, how does that benefit the community when you're gentrifying everybody out of the area? 
and then the owner gets the majority of the money that goes into the stadium. And you guys are so bad to where they're now having to pass ordinances and laws, I guess, if you will, to stop them from doing that. And because, it's not even working because you got these people take jobs. Well, I'm, I'm talking about as far as uh, raising these people yeah. rents. They're yeah, just they're, they're having to put a moratorium on it and say, <laughs> okay, goddammit. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, especially here in L.A., you got to understand that, too. We have the biggest indigenous homeless population on Skid Row in the United States. We've had that for over 40, 50 years now. By them doing what they're doing right now has now exasperated the situation. And we have more homeless now that are outside of that Skid Row zone. If you come to L.A., you'll see it all. Mm. Tents are popped up everywhere. Fullerton, California, Orange County. California, have the five most homeless cities are in California. Yeah. Sad. It's in sad. California. And Joe Nelson says the only thing truly foreign is our ignorance. We should be bilingual. We should be studying various languages and opening various doors. Intelligence opens doors and take you places. Be a knower. Absolutely. Well, Manolo. Uh, Manolo. Manolo. And Guguletu. Guguletu. That's me. That's Zulu. Zulu. So we're, more, we're bilingual. <laughs> we're trying to get it. We're bilingual. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but I get your point. I mean, yeah. I'll be honest with you guys. In, in high school, I took French. <laughs> How, how'd that work for you? We. Oui. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. It was, it was sexy at the time. It, well, I don't know what the hell I was doing. I failed both times. At least I got a C in, J in Japanese when I took it. I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. I know I under, under, toi, cat, saint, set. But you had a dream to go to Paris one day. No, that's nine and, look, and D's. Look, the closest D has ever come to Paris is up the street up here. Paris, California. That's and that's P-E-R-R-I-S. Right, right. I ain't trying to go to no Paris. Or she Eiffel Tower, she went to Vegas. Right, right. Mount Rubin or whatever. <laughs> And uh, Charlie says, where is the black American think tank? Well, you know what? It's funny because... I'm glad you brought that up. I was actually speaking to my daughter about this uh, yesterday. I said, you know, because me and her went to this meeting. I was invited to to sit on this committee, to, you know, to give my input. And I said, you know, Deanna, believe it. And I said, you and I are a think tank because mm -hmm. we got in this meeting and we asked questions that people weren't asking. Right. So to your point, we do need a think tank like... And, you know, when we do get these think tanks, I'm not talking about the normal democratic, you know, pundit right. think Right, the war, tanks. Uh, you know, how we should yeah, conduct I'm our next Yeah, I'm talking about wars. asking some real serious questions that directly link back to the benefit of black people, did, right? Did, did your girl come in there late and everything talk about, I got a question! No, no, <laughs> no. Uh, and Tay says, I was married to a Hispanic man and nah. They are not here for black people. Mm. All right, now mm. you heard it. Yes. Straight from the source. She learned her lesson. I mean, you know, and let's just, just keep it real. I mean, they they for their people, which is nothing wrong with right. that. I, know, people I get it, but we should get it. Right. But they look out for them, we'll look out for us. Let's be done with yeah, it. Yeah, I mean. Black woman, I need you. You need me. Let's you. stop getting on. We need this black and brown coalition. What the uh -uh. is that? Uh uh. What is that? I, I can't coalesce with you until I can coalesce with myself. And then what you gonna call less for me? Right. You know what? And, okay. and notice they always want us to do, to do them first. Yeah. And then when it's time for them to pay us back, you what know deal? What else that sound like? What deal? <laughs> that sound like Pastor Wilson. She wanted me to do her first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Just playing. Oh, um, man. And uh, Charles says we know why there are no offices of specific, uh, or specific catering to blacks is because of lack of black leadership. Of course, in a system of white supremacy, mm -hmm. America, it don't take much for us to slip to the bottom rung of the economic or social ladder. Wait, 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 wait. You said slip to the bottom rung, brother. I have to correct you. <laughs> we, are, we are the bottom rung. That's how this system we works. We underneath it. And, and, like, is that a ladder and, up there? And, and, and think about it. Anybody that comes here. They put themselves above us. You got Nigerians that come here that put themselves. You know, they're black when it's convenient. They don't want. Don't talk about my people. I'm sorry. I, I got to talk about your people. <laughs> they, 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 that's how they do. They come here. They take advantage of all the programs. And, and what, what's the first thing they say? I'm not African American. I'm Kenyan. I'm Nigerian. Right. You know that 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 that's the system we're in. Right. We're at the bottom. Right. Donnell says there's a great number of Hispanics that whitewash, uh, chasing the American dream and feeling biased better than us. Most shun us out of ignorance, and there are a lot of Hispanics that is intelligent and um, supportive of our struggle. Even though we are um, know their we are their root, 
like Fat Joe, it's um, about awareness and all is lacking on various levels. No, absolutely. So we know people like that. But I think at the end of the day, too, we should also be cognizant that those people can go back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And a lot of times they do when it's beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. That's what we talk about, you know, um, supporting the black struggle. We ain't talking about straddling the fence. You know, um, we talk about like for real, for real. Mm, true, you know, uh, true story. Good, good point. True story. Seven years ago, I ran for uh, council here. We exposed everything there was to expose about a Hispanic council member. Correct? Correct. You had older black people and just black people in general that supported her regardless Man. of what the facts showed. Oh, she for us. We don't care what you say. You just hating. It's like, but what has she done for you? Right. right. I mean, she was unapologetic for her people. Right, exactly. You know, even to the point of corruption a lot of times, but a lot of black people was like, oh, you just don't want to bring it, jobs. Yeah, and it was older <laughs> black people. And how dare you talk? Somebody called me Ronald McDonald. Uh, you stupid. And Charlie, uh, Charlie says most Hispanic Latins are against black Americans and African people. Look what China and Japan has done to rebuild African nation more than Europe or American has point. ever done. Good point. Absolutely. And we and also know it's for their benefit. Right. Yeah. Know. They're in there to, to get some stuff. Right. So. And Benny says they hate us just the same as white people. In fact, every other race on this planet harbor a tremendous amount of hate in their hearts against us. We just can't bring ourselves to believe it. Uh, because we want to be loved so bad, they simply use us for convenient purposes only. Absolutely. It's a fact, well, Benny. It's a fact. Well, they do not yes. like us. Well, 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 Benny, here's the thing. Remember that album by that great pro prophetic group, Fear of a Black Planet? Yes. Go in, when we were in Africa, because think about it. If you just take the Africans in the continent of Africa, other than China, we can kick ass right. all over the, the spot. So, I mean, and I just, and this is why we say more and more black people should, should go to Africa because it, it would open up your eyes and bring a little bit more uh, pride into you and about your situation. Like, hey, I should be doing better than what I'm doing. Right. You know? right. Exactly. Right. I mean, yeah, going to Africa, really, I had a serious paradigm shift. I just really did. I was in the shower today like, damn, <laughs> I wish I was in Africa right yeah, now. I really right. was. I was just right. like. But well, once you relax. I was like it was like no and, it was, it was, and, 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 and 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 no shade to Africa economically you we were okay right there was no stress like oh wow the lights about to be sh you know oh, right I right it, it was cool everybody let's all go let's all go right yes, yes. um and uh, Tay says uh, that's why L A County passed the emergency rent control to freeze rent, rent hikes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's what um, I heard them say on NPR. They, it was like an emergency thing. Like, wait, wait, yeah. hold it, hold it. Yeah, because all, all it's doing is adding more homeless people. Because let, 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 And also think about homeless this way. In California, where are you going to go? Exactly. Where Skid Row. Right. I mean, and, and that's the standing room only. Right. But even if you tried to move out here to the Inland Empire, we're just going to ship you back over. There's nowhere to go here anymore. Right. I mean, the rents are high out here. Right. There's I'm hearing about the, they, the in Marina Valley, they're saying they're building some apartments and the rent they is just, going. Yeah, they, they just opened them right across by Box Springs. Like $2,200 yes, for what, a two for box bedroom? Yeah. Shit. No, no, not a two bedroom, one bedroom. Shit. Yeah. Those, those brand new ones that just opened right across the street. Not me. I'd Fair be, Island. I'd right. give me a cardboard box before I did that. Hey, and, uh, Lake Paris has always got some tinting spots. I'd be right over there. <laughs> Campgrounds. Uh, Al says the Chargers and Rams will play in the new stadium next season yes. in the LA FXL. I mean, F X F L FL team. team will play there, play where the Chargers are playing yeah. now. Okay, okay, got it, got it. And Pam, you said you are so right about the LA homeless people, the people yep. in LA. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of people. Now, I'm thinking if that's LA, what about Houston, the homeless in Houston? New York, I don't even want to go well, there. Well, you ask Al about the homeless in Houston. Anybody else is in Houston? Mm -hmm. He said well, you have them, but not, you don't yeah. see it as, you know, like yeah. you do out here. Uh, and uh, Jonelle, you say, we're we're not lacking black leadership. We fight um, and ignoring our black leadership. Um, their example set, absolutely. And, and one of us, um, Minister Louis Farrakhan, has been setting an example for um, over 60 years, most of his life. And we have a lot of people who want to try to tear him down mm -hmm. when all he's ever tried to do is teach black people unity, you know, um, and to do for self. I mean, even and, to this very day. You know, and, and, it, and it kind of blows my mind how you see these failed politicians go to jail or whatever. And a lot of us follow these politics because that's what we're used to. But mm -hmm. you see a successful a black leader like the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, who's been doing it for 60 years successfully, and we won't follow that person. Right. 
Exactly. It just doesn't, you know, it's crazy. Right. And China says, I mean, uh, China. Benny says China is there only to colonize Africa. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. They, what I, when I was in Africa, what I noticed was people are there for the resources. The diamond mines. I mean, Africa is rich, bitch. Africa is rich. Right. And that's right. what they're there for. Right. I mean, that's why the white people won't leave. They, re they will kill everybody before they leave. Right. But they got to go. They, but they got to go. At the end of the day, they got to go. I'm waiting for my boy Julius to actually, you know, make some moves. Oh, and okay. by the way, your boy uh, Zuma, his corruption chart, uh, trial will move forward, but they suspended it until February. Okay. Well, we'll be watching that. Let's we, go back and watch we might, it. We might be back let's, there. Let's go February. back and watch it. Uh, <laughs> 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 and Al says, just a tip for the show to make it even more professional. Number one, straight shot camera angle. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, he got a list. Okay. Two. Sit still throughout the entire show, Donovan. Uh, 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 three, it is you named in the producer now. <laughs> Number three, a special guest at least once a month. Four, take the show on the road. And five, I'm assuming it's an all-black show. The both of you can wear something black, I'm just saying. Duly noted. Duly noted. Well, exactly the reason why we don't show. have a straight angle camera shot is because I'm moderating the show, and it's easier for me to get the comments from here opposed to right. here. Um, and, and Donovan and is kind of doing angle. his thing, yeah. So that's why it's we have it. Um, and Donovan has to get up, like you know, it's important to kill flies in yeah. here because we'd be like this, knocking the camera over and all right. kinds of stuff. You know, like that. Well, you know we'll, we'll take that into consideration. Yes. Um, uh, and we'll go as on it the, gets colder. We won't have to worry about that. Yeah, and we'll go on the road. Yeah, we'll, we'll hit San Bernardino. Right, <laughs> if you're right, if it's Ontario. <laughs> and uh, Charles says, those are bold on scientific blanket claims against all Latinos and Hispanics that mm -hmm. I definitely don't agree with. But when people got a made up mind to hate or think or the worst group, mm -hmm. um, then that's on them. Facts can't change their mind. Some of us black Americans got the audacity to be prejudiced against Latinos and Hispanics. Wow. Mm. Um, well, I mean... Is it prejudice or is it a fact? Ah, Charles, I love you to death. Yes, or is it I, observation? I, I, I really do, but th th this is kind of the problem I've been having lately with people, maybe even myself. When does truth become prejudice or hate? Mm. It's the truth. It's not like, I think that's another thing, and I'm not speaking specifically to you, Charles. I think that's another thing as black people, we need to get out of, well, we need to be nice. They're not nice to us. We need to, because I don't think we're being mean. We're just. I mean, I'm not gonna go out of my way. To yeah, I, trip I, I, a yeah, I don't be mean, mean at P, to, to Hispanics. I got um one of my good homegirls is Hispanic, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm also able to be my authentic self with her. We have these conversations a lot, so we. I, I'm, I'm gonna be me. I'm never going to not be me in order to make anybody else feel comfortable. The fact that Hispanic people. Do not, not all, no. but a lot of them don't like black people. Right. It's a known fact. In fact, the uh, president of um, LULAC back in the 50s 60s, and 60s, 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 um, Felipe somebody, forget his name, he says, I am not interested in forming an alliance with black people. Let mm -hmm. them solve their own problems. problems. And you know, when Donovan was running for office um, in 2000, it was a 14? Four. Uh, no, no, yeah, 14. 2014. 14. When he was running for office, we went to one of their events because the candidates were invited to this LULAC event. Yeah. And do you know who was there? It was mostly black candidates. A lot of them were up there already in office yeah. there, you know, rubbing elbows and stuff. Mm -hmm. But their president in the past said that he wasn't interested in forming an alliance with black people. So why are we there supporting mm -hmm. their cause? So it's not hate. It's just the truth. Right. And right. when we when we start getting one with the truth, then we're going to start to progress. And, and then the funny thing is at that event, they had asked me particularly what I'm going to do for the Hispanics. I was like, I'm not, you know, I was like, what do you mean? Like, you know, I'm going to do for rising boat lifts all tides. Because I wasn't going to do something specifically for the Hispanics, they did not issue me a check at all. Yeah, I mean, and they invited these black candidates there because it wasn't about you know, what can we do for y'all. It's about what you going to do for us. And guess who they gave the check to? The corrupted Hispanic chick that's in this district to this very day. Right. So, I mean, I don't think it's prejudice or hate. It's the truth. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, Jonelle says, do you know everybody study our black leadership but us? Just sit and observe. Mm. 
Uh, sit back and observe who becomes the topics of most, uh, of most conversations. Majority truly follow and watch us in more ways than we realize. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll give you guys an even basic layman example. A friend of mine and I go up the mountain all the time to exercise. And as a majority of California, but majority of people up there are Hispanic. And do you know they that... They bring y'all down. They, you know what? You're being funny, <laughs> but a lot of times they do. You know, like, or, out of my way, or, or bitch. They won't move out the way. And so <laughs> out of my you, way. They, sometimes you got to like burrow through like it's going to be me or you. And then finally they move and they might say something or whatever. But a lot of those women got fake ass booties. Yeah. And, and it doesn't... And the booties don't even look... It, but it's look, it looks more it, ridiculous than, than a black woman with a, a Morlock hairstyle on. But the point that I'm making is, so they study us. They want to be yes. us, even to the point of uh, butchering their bodies to look mm -hmm. ridiculous. But they don't want the rest of what we got going on. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. that even it will, they, they, they study us overall, but mm -hmm. we don't study each other. So I agree with you, John. And Cindy says... New York City, they call it the working homeless. Yeah, we got a lot of that in um, California. People are actually going into these downtown buildings and working these great jobs and then getting off and sleeping in their cars and right. going to the gym to take a shower and get up and do it all over again because they don't have a home. The, the, uh, I don't know if you saw the article. It came out like uh, about a month ago, like four, about four weeks ago. The RV business is booming here in California. Not because people want to just take their families and go and do like this. They're getting RVs because people figure I would rather right. take my home with me. I can park on the street and I can live in the RV and then go to work, especially up in San Francisco. You saw that article I put yeah. up on San Francisco. Yeah. People are just done. They're just done. But uh, RV business in California is big business now. And that way, if they try to repossess it, it'll be on the run, bitch. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, you better catch so me. I mean, you know, I, you know, I can't afford a, a house, but I can afford a, maybe a, a forty, sixty-five thousand dollar RV, right? You know, and I can park it on the street, and I'm good to go. And oh, you have a very great question, and I'm glad you actually um, brought that up. He says, "I have a question for you. If Yang does not win the nomination, do you withhold your vote?" Yes, <laughs> unequivocally. Yes, I will not vote blue, no matter who. Yeah, I mean, remember, everybody, at the end of the day, voting is a transaction. Yes. He's asking, actually saying he's going to give me something for my vote. Legal bribery. Fine, we can do it. Everybody else ain't promising me nothing. I don't, I, I'm done with the vote for me this time. When I get in, no, I'm not doing that no more. And who came up with that vote blue no matter who? I want to kick you with a thunk. Not really. But I really do. Yeah. So remember, voting is a transaction. So if, if nobody's offering me nothing, I'm not voting. Right. So the answer is no. Oh. Uh, and Charlie says comparative analysis um, is what and uh, hashtag mm -hmm. Andrew Yang 2020 will mm -hmm. use to create jobs and planting bamboo Boo. will uh, in climate change develop bamboo resource tenure systems in mm -hmm. America. Planting bamboo trees. Yep. Uh, uh, planting bamboo trees. Oh. Cleanse our air of carbon yeah. monoxide uh, poisoning, and in Africa, they can, uh, make bicycles, beds, and mattresses mm -hmm. will not hold order and uh, prevent any types of insects yes. in them. Yes, yes, a lot of that in Vietnam too. They, mm -hmm. use, they use bamboo for everything in Vietnam. You know, toothbrushes, all kinds of right. stuff. Right. So. Uh, I actually have a bamboo toothbrush. Um, Donnell says, um, "Rich, that's why they stole black leadership. Yep. They know our ancestors uh, built those pyramids and so-called mm -hmm. UFOs above their heads." But that's another topic. But nobody steals trash. They steal the best. Oops. Mm -hmm. They steal the best. Uh, we the best facts. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. You right. are not lying. Um, and then we're going to get out of here because I just realized it was like after 430. Well, you, you're doing good. Keep anyway, so Arthur says, um, you're pretty good with your French numbers, Demetra. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, I was out of I, um, high school over that like, the, 30 years. That's the only thing she, she learned, though. <laughs> no. Uh, and, uh, he says, mm. but now about learning a new language, it's great, useful, and <laughs> right, uh, adventure and all. But I kind of wonder if it's a priority for you, Black Americans, because he's in Canada. Mm. Uh, I mean, are you still looking for a political candidate who at least acknowledges your situation and have an agenda specifically for you? I'm just saying that for now, I believe you guys have to mark your territory unapologetically. Just my two cents. No, You're absolutely. absolutely right, and no, we absolutely. haven't found that candidate yet. Because one thing, in, one thing about America is we don't want to own up. America never wants to own up to its wrongs. Right. And so to to say that publicly, we can't even get an apology. Okay. You know. Right. You know. So. Right. You know, especially when it comes to black man. 
No, they can apologize to the Asians for in, interning them as, a, as far as the oh, black man yeah, can do. They apologized for slavery a couple years back. Yeah, but was that really an apology? Sorry. Yeah, so. Sorry. And they, and they figure by apologizing, they don't have to pay it. Right. That why well, you Negroes is a, uh, forgiving people for killing your mama and them. So, I mean. Okay, you got me on that. Kai says, yep. Um, a lot of them don't like blacks. You guys are correct. Yes, and she, uh, hey, my cousin Kai has been in L.A. a long time, so she would know. I bet she knows, right? Fact, what she says, facts. Fact. And don't answer, be truthful. If the truth hurts, shit, go heal and die. <laughs> Self-preservation <laughs> uh, is respected and clearly not. We, the black people who do practice that, people love to call the truth hate. No yeah. truth is love, especially self-love. I mean, God, I mean, it's just a... We got to get past that. You're being mean. Yeah. Don't say those things. Yeah. I mean, it's the truth. I'm one of those people, and people accuse me a lot of uh, being very opinionated from mm -hmm. my daddy to my man and my daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and say I have very strong opinions and that I don't um, use compassion a lot. You don't. But I'm like, I'm working on it. But sometimes people just need to hear the truth. Yes. You know, I ain't got time to be listening. But ask yourself this. For those of us that believe in Judgment Day, do you think that uh, God is going to go and say, oh, yeah, that, that was a little bit of, you know, we're let, even though I told you not to kill, that's okay. Yeah, come on now. Yeah, you stabbed him. Yeah. It wasn't hard. He died, but you didn't stab yeah. him hard. So we're going to, so, no. I mean, he's going to be, Yeah. it is what it is. Black, black and white. There is no middle ground. There is no purgatory. Right. And uh, Charles says, unless we uh, poll every Latina and Hispanics, and then, again, I didn't say all. I didn't say all. Oh, we don't. I was married to a Latina. Yeah. You were? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Trina was, was, was yeah. Latina. I, I didn't say all. Oh. You say um, and they verbally said they hate black people. Then one can only speak for their experiences, and that is only the individual experience. And our number, oops, I think it's me talking. About, our number mm -hmm. one enemy is America's system of white supremacy, not mm -hmm. uh some off focus easily hit job on people fleeing American war policies and destabilizing South America and setting up puppet regimes who cater to uh, American oligarchs. Well, I mean, I agree with you on that, but what yeah. does that got to do with black people? Exactly. Like, I'm not going to care more about another people than I do my own. It's just, I'm just, I don't see the point in doing that. And so, well, again, what I'm not saying all, I'm not saying all at all. You know, but I am saying a lot of them do feel that way. They don't want to be, as some people say, beneath black people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They don't. I mean, look at how how they deal with their women. They don't have a problem screwing black women, but you try to get with their women. Oh, it's a problem. And matter of fact, the uh, MS13 put out a, yeah. a directive that said if they see you, they black, they they Latino women with black dudes, they they gonna green light them. They're gonna green light them. Whatever that is. And then Charles, I want you to test this theory out. Go into, I don't know what Hispanic stores you got around there. Out here, we call them Maxi Foods, Cardenias, and mm -hmm. all of them. El Supra. El Supra. Go into those Mexican grocery stores and say, hey, I need a job. I see y'all hiring. Let me know how that work out for you. See if they're going to cape for you as hard as we cape for them. And um, Al says, you are um, you are very right. Be your authentic self. Uh, um, a wise black professor told me, Talk yourself <laughs> up, not down, because there's enough people doing that for you already. <laughs> ah, that sounds like Professor Smitty. Close. <laughs> uh, and uh, Jonelle says, we are in our conditioned position because of all eating, uh, everybody's eating off of us, mm -hmm. using us, but especially our ignorance to reality and the importance of self-love, self-empowerment, and self-reservation. Yes, we actually have to get on board with those things. And I will always use what Jonelle said from now on. He says, you protect what you love. When you love yourself, you don't allow any and everybody to do things to, to you. you. Mm -hmm. That is going to uh, affect your quality of life. And so, That's yeah, right. self-love as you say for the win. And Al says, did y'all see the Clint Eastwood movie, Absolute Power, with Gene Hackman? Yes. Oh, man. Anything anything with Clint is good. I'm sorry. Well, not everything. but Yeah, except for when he got the act of the fool talking yeah. to that chair. And Ray Warren, <laughs> how you doing? He says, how are you going to vote for someone that has not been nominated? Well, I obviously. Well, we're right now we're in the primary. Yeah, we're so. in the primary, so um, we got to vote for him to be the candidate. Right. So when we go through the primaries, which is when? In February? Yeah. Or something like yeah, that? Yeah, initial primaries. And in initial prim uh, primaries in February, we have an opportunity to vote for the actual Democrat nominee. And then from that point, we'll go from there. But to O's point, 
Um, if it is not Yang, then I, I am not going right. to vote. I'm not one of those who are voting who, blue no matter who. And you got to understand why are, aren't like some of these people dropping out that don't have a chance? Because they are trying to split that vote split to make vote. sure Bone, Bernie Sanders doesn't get the nomination. And, you and know, Biden. And Biden. You know, they just you know, they want Biden to yeah, be in they there want or, Biden. or Elizabeth Warren. Right. So, you know, and they definitely don't want Andrew Yang leading. And that's why people are not dropping because usually people would have dropped Biden. Right. So. And Charlie said the Prime Minister of Belgium apology this year to uh, Congolese uh, African people for 25 million people the Belgian state killed. Yeah. Oh my gosh, those Belgians. Did they, write, did they write a check though? Hey, Lakeisha. And you say yes. So anyway, I don't see any more of you guys' comments. I didn't realize that we had actually gone over. Um, but anyway, I, I will address your comments as we are leaving. As always, thank you guys so much for being here and having this uh, very insightful conversation with us and Sammy says Farrakhan doesn't want the job of Pharaoh in the time um, in the time even his kingdom is uh, to be destroyed yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely right. and so you know um, thank you guys for being here uh, and having this conversation with us as always it is our pleasure to um, do this um, we'll be here next Sunday if you guys have any questions comments or concerns Please uh, inbox me or Donovan and let us know so we can do the research. And I'm going to read you guys' comments as we leave. Um, as I tell you guys, sometimes it's hard to come up with stuff to talk about. Yeah, it is. Um, I actually one day want to do a show talking about a, a blueprint for black economic wealth. I just have to do a lot of study because there's quite a few of them out there. One being the uh, blueprint of the Nation of Islam, Marcus Garvey, which are kind of one of the same if you think about it. Um, Dr. Claude Anderson, there's a whole bunch of them. A few of them that I want to kind of research and, you know, bring it here. So I'm going to do that in a couple of weeks. And so... <laughs> I want you to read Al's comment. Uh, yes. And yes. Uh, Charles says, you know y'all are unapologetic black progressives like myself. Yes. You better believe it, baby. Yes, right. <laughs> Yes. And Donnell says, no liberated-minded um, black person runs for president. We are a nation within a nation begging. We should be working and building like everything in nature, being self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. No, far kind, don't. Um, let's see, Farrakhan don't need to run for president in a nation that's beyond doom, but trying to put yeah. a cloak on it, uh, fall and fell, fall and failure, dollar is pop, debt is beyond measure, this white nation is done, do for self, absolutely, I can imagine Farrakhan wanting to be the, yeah, yeah, I, I'm good. Well, well, like I said, uh, our next trip back to Africa, I mean, I don't know. Right. I might not come back. You and me both, you hear that, Al? <laughs> it's bags back. And Al said, today... At the Dallas back Dallas. at the Dallas Black Church, sure. Pastor Wilson said, "Just because we're legs are shaking or shaking, didn't mean I was done eating. Don, e just, just because our legs were shaking, don't mean I was done eating." <laughs> And for those of you guys that don't know, watch that, your mouth. That's that was the shut. pastor that Pastor Wilson that was uh, trending on social. Media. Who probably had a very packed church this church, Sunday. Yes. They, yes. they wanted them to that healing tongue. Did you see what I put on Facebook about the song he was singing? And the, uh, they had the choir singing. You gotta go downtown. Yes. <laughs> That's the way to my life. Yeah. Today's sermon is, brothers, you gotta go downtown. Yes. Anyway, Arson says, thank you again, guys. Have a nice week. You do the same. And... Charlie said, thank you, yes, Dee, Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dave and Donovan, for taking the time to speak with us. It was our pleasure. And Sammy says, I know you would do a great job. And Al says, I saw this lady with a Belafonte armpits, Harry. <laughs> Ray, Ron, Ray Byrne, you guys must need the extra and $1,000. That's why you are ready to sell your souls. Sell our souls? What are we selling our souls to? $1,000 in the United States? How far does that go? California? Yeah, how far does that go? So how can we sell our souls for a thousand dollars? That's that that'll get you a happy meal, brother. Do you know who I'm sitting next to? This Negro don't need an extra thousand dollars. I ain't gonna turn it down though. All right. <laughs> I ain't gonna turn it down though. So, baby, let me tell you something. If I'm gonna sell my soul, it's gonna be more than a thousand dollars a month. Okay, mm. you gonna read about my soul being sold? But a thousand dollars a month versus zero. Let's do the math. I mean, I'm not, let's not being silly here. Okay, let me let this. Like, come to the table with some real sufficient argumentation and debate. Now, don't come on here talking about niggas is selling their mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, selling their souls for a thousand dollars a month. Come on, brother. Right. Now, I don't need a thousand dollars, but I'll take it. But what about the people that do need a thousand dollars? What yeah. about those people? 
What about, you know, somebody whose um, wife is out working a part-time job at Popeye's Chicken so that they can keep food on the table? What about that $1,000 being kept in the household? She can stay home and raise our, her children, mm -hmm. especially in the black community. We need intact families, and we need mamas to stay home and raise the children and, uh, and, and be a service to the children instead of being away from the house. And so when you're talking about a person is selling their soul for $1,000, I think you probably need to re-examine what you're really saying because, as I said at the beginning of the show, a thousand dollars is a game changer for a lot of people. Now, it might not be a game changer for me or Donovan or anybody else, but it's a game changer for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that's what we talk about for the majority, not ourselves, for the people who don't that can't speak. Because you want to know why? They're at work right now on a Sunday. Yeah, I mean, people say that you selling your soul. Like, how much is your soul worth? Right. I mean, if you even formalize the thought that somebody's selling their soul for a thousand dollars, brother, you need to raise your expectations mm -hmm. in life. But anyway, uh, as everybody else was saying, John L says pastors need love too. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, right. they do. And I, uh, and Samuel says I was slow on that out. <laughs> and Charles says America is a sovereign nation whose dollars are spent into existence. America can never go broke, and she always pays her debts. And well, Char uh, we used to. Um, yeah, Charlie Ray Rayburn, uh, and, and he needs to wake up. You know, I just, I like, I can have a conversation with people, but I can't have a silly conversation yeah. because when you start saying stupid shit, like, you know, you sold your soul for a thousand dollars. Hell, do we even got a soul? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just saying, right. you're saying silly stuff now. Uh, I, I will, Charles. Um, and then. They, he also say the Chinese dudes ain't saying nothing but a thousand. Uh, and Charlie says all the homeless need that thousand dollars UBI. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean there's a lot of people who actually need that money. And just think what a thousand dollars would do within the community. It would form more businesses because there's more money stimulating. Right, the but people run around talking about you selling your soul. Yeah. Andrew Yang ain't paid me nothing yet. I just had a baby. I'm getting $1,000 for 18 years. Add that money up. There's money for that child to, right. go, to, to go to college. Right. I've been wanting to start a business. Now I can save up for a year and put $12,000 instead of trying to go to a bank and who ain't going to hardly get black people nothing for no loan. I can start me a business. Right. I'm, I'm a, a wayward dad that has six kids out there by four different women. Those children will have $1,000. Uh, and hell, I have thousand dollars if I'm the daddy in my pocket, opposed right. to the, you know Uncle Sam digging in my paycheck exactly. for child support. I mean, I'm just saying we could be here forever. Right. Um, and uh, Al says, "Great job on the audience." Number one rule of the Demetri K show: don't talk bad about Mr. Yes, Lou Farrakhan. Absolutely. Right. And Charles says, "And what about the black Popeye TV owners? But the real owner is white." Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, right? We like we advertise for chicken sandwiches, but we selling our souls for UBI. Now, what do you call cooling for a chicken sandwich? Mm. And then uh, Charlie says, Andrew Yang makes the case for heavy investment in new technologies to combat climate change. Right, I mean, because the way things are going now, the jobs are going. Right, you know, and, and um, you know, black people suffer the most under unemployment. So what do you think we're going to suffer under um, when AI takes over? I, I'm going to say, I, I'm going to say this. And that, not that it hasn't already. Yeah, I, I'm going to say this, and, you know, and this is the last thing I'm going to say to be before we go. When my mom, who's 70 years old, realizes and she realizes it now that there are no jobs out there for these kids because of the AI and the robotic that is happening. And my mom's a way throwback. We're there. We're there. We are there. So anyway, you guys, we are out here for real. So we will see you guys and talk to you guys next week. Uh, actually, we'll be here on Friday. Friday our free flow oh, friday so if you guys have anything you want to talk and about you know, there was another show that started doing free flow fly day really msnbc does their free uh free flow fly day with ari ari melbourne didn't know that we need to sue him al get on that you're executive producer we shall and charlie says demetra k and don will rock the house tonight yeah yeah yes. all right you guys we will see you later stay peace. blessed peace Always that one. I thought we were going to get out of there clean. And then I said the N word. <laughs> yeah.